Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. And in this video, I'm going to discuss how the Arctic sea ice is being absolutely annihilated or pulverized or destroyed or massacred. Use whatever word you want to describe. Uh, it's just going, folks. And this will have global ramifications. And what happens in the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. It's not like Las Vegas. The loss of the sea ice, the loss of the snow cover in June, the darkening of Greenland, all of these things are contributing to a darkening Arctic. A darkening Arctic absorbs more solar energy, heats up much faster than the rest of the planet, decreases the temperature gradient to the equator, causes the jet streams to slow down and become wavy and distorted, and greatly ramps up the frequency, severity, and intensity of extreme weather events torrential rains, flooding, causing floods, droughts in other places. This is going to affect the global food supply very, very soon. We have a, a global climate change emergency on our hands and we have to take strong action. We got to stop messing around, talking about the problem. We have an emergency situation. So I'm going to focus just on the sea ice in this particular presentation. Okay, so I killed the lights to get better contrast. So just Google Arctic sea ice graphs and you get this type of, uh, you get this type of screen here, all kinds of data. So we have this, the, the uh, concentration of the ice. This is September 8th. So it's basically almost real time data. Other views of it, you can see the ice declining, the extent um, from different satellite sensors, different countries. Um, there's all kinds of data on here, and this is the sea surface temperatures, the uh, mean temperatures north of 80 degrees, um, all kinds of information here, very good information, so browse through it. You can click on any one of these individual graphs and get more information. So that's what I'm going to do um, to show you uh, what's happening. So let's say if we click on the first image here, let me go back up to the top, click on here. This is what sort of thing that you get. You get this screen here. Now what we have is, I'm just going to move out of the picture so you can see everything. Okay, these are the sea ice maps. Okay, so this is what we have. This is the um, September 8th concentration. So this is solid ice. This is water here. You can see how it's breaking up here, completely breaking up, leaving a uh, stranding this region here. So it's got this kind of shape. This is another uh, image using false color to show different ice sicknesses. Again, you can see exactly what's going on. We're the ice is rapidly going. Um, this is the Antarctic ice, of course. Uh, you know, we're, we're at the end of summer, fall, and the Arctic is the Antarctic is going into spring. You can see that the concentration, there's actually gaps and things there, but we'll focus on the Arctic right now. This is the Arctic sea ice extent. Um, I don't know why they left out 2012, I think, in this image. Here is it with 2012 was the record minimum, and we're approaching that, so we're the second lowest. Um, here is an interesting image. So this shows the Arctic uh, sea ice configurations. This was back, uh, the white area was back in September of last year. But, but look at the 2007 minimum. This is the extent of the ice in 2007 at the minimum. This is what we had in 2012 in the light blue line. And this is what we have in the 1981 to 2010 climatology, if you like, or the 30-year thir um, average of where the sea ice was at the end of the melt season. Um, this is another image. So this shows you the 2012. Okay, so this is light. The 2012 minimum is what we see here with the ice, and that's compared to the 
2007 minimum, which is here. Yeah. Okay. This this is a polar. This is a symbolic bear claw, by the way. You know, the polar bears are going to be scratching out the eyes of humanity because we've trashed their habitat. Okay, so let me go back here. The, the bear claw got too close to the touch screen. And um, okay, so we've got the 2007 minimum, 2012 minimum, and I've just showed you what's happening this year. Um, okay, so there's lots of information on this site. Okay, now let's have a look at the, uh, the, the Bremen. So I took this image I showed you. This is 20, September 8th, 2016. So today, basically. Generally, the minimum of sea ice is about September 15th. Sometimes it varies. As it goes out to September 20th, maybe a little bit beyond, but not much beyond. Once it starts freezing up, it seems to do it quickly. But what you can see here, so we've got at least another week, possibly two, because this water is very, very warm all around, as I'll show you, which could extend the uh, melt season. What is very, very new and novel this year, and it's not in a good way, is that the ice is so pulverized and crushed up that there's no structural integrity along the Canadian Arctic, Arctic Archipelago. So the very, very fine structure of the ice, it can move past each other. There's no ice blocks here on any of these channels. So what you're seeing is the ice is going through all of these channels here and melting out. So before there was a block of solid, more solid ridged ice, thicker ice here, including some multi-year ice, and that would stop the ice from doing what it's doing because there, it's just like slush and pulverized. It's going through all these channels. So this is bad. We're losing a lot of volume through these channels, which we never had happened before. Also, there's a large amount of ice that is extending out into the Fram Strait where it goes into the Atlantic and melts off. So we've got very thin ice around the pole. This is, this is clearly uh, this is clearly a problem for humanity. We're losing our white, um, our white pole uh, cap over the Arctic Ocean. What's happening in terms of temperatures? So this is this is again September eight. This is sea surface temperatures. Okay. So if I click up here in the Arctic, you can see that the temperatures. This is the sea surface temperature. So when we're down here, we've got the ice, but you can see the water is warming up all around the edges of the ice. Okay, so zero to two, two to four, if you can tell the colors is here, zero to two is this guy. Um, this is, okay, but look at what, if you go out here, you know, look near the Russian islands, you know, eight to 10 degrees, actually even higher. It's 10 to 12 degrees, it looks like. Patches of uh, warm water. Okay, very, very warm water. And then you go 12 to 14 degrees. You know, so these whole areas are extremely warm seawater temperatures. It's warm going down to the bottom. Don't forget that there's, as there's less and less ice in the Arctic, there's more and more wave action. The wave action stirs up the melt water on the surface, which is freshly uh, create, which is newly created from, from melt water. Okay, there's some salinity to it, but it's a lot lower because mostly it's first year ice and the salinity, there's brine pockets in the first year ice and they release. So when it melts, it's not completely fresh water. Um, but, you know, wave action mixes up the water, warmer water below comes to the surface. You know, we're, we're under attack here. We're really under attack. You know, it's like humanity is just rolling over and, and, and not doing, like, they're giving up. I mean, they don't even realize, you know, it's the frogs in the pot sort of thing. We're no better than the frogs in the pot. This is actually, um, this is sea surface temperature anomaly around the globe. So a couple things, you know, no El Nino. Right, we've got this ridiculously resilient ridge 
idea. You know, huge pocket of warm water here, which faded with the El Nino and it's come right back as I expected and I think mentioned in some previous videos. You know, look at the water, there's patches of water here that are four to eight degrees Celsius warmer than normal. Also the Gulf Stream up here warm. So when we go into winter, you know, expect massive snowfalls along the east coast of the US, you know, as this warm water evaporates, putting moisture in the air, which will then be pumped over and fall as snow as soon as we go into winter and our continent gets a bit colder in North America. Let's have a look up in the Arctic. So look at this, four to eight degrees. There's patches over eight degrees Celsius above normal. This is the sea surface temperature. It takes a lot of energy to heat water. You know, four to eight degrees over these vast regions. Like it's just, it's, it's incredible, right? Of course, you know, all of this heat in the Arctic, it's gonna take a lot longer for the ice to form. Once, it, once the minimum passes and the ice starts forming, you have to cool down all this water to below zero to get the ice, right? So the winter sea ice extent will be very, very, will be much lower. So, you know, it's only a matter of probably a few years before we lose the sea ice completely. Okay, uh, this is temperature in the Arctic right now. So green, anything above, anything green is above zero, above zero Celsius or 32 Fahrenheit above the freezing point. Okay, so, you know, we've got the Russian islands here. Look at this vast area. It's all above zero still. You know, it's uh, below zero on, above the surface of the ice, but the ice is still melting and thinning from below. Okay, so in terms of the temperatures, this is 2016. This is the temperature anomaly in the Arctic, north of the 80th parallel. This is Danish data as a function of the day of year. So you can see fluctuation, but you know, if you average it out, it's still well above the climatological level. And what we see is that it's extending out on this side above normal. So we can, this is 2016, we can go to 2015, 2014, see all the fluctuations here, you know, extended out a bit here. Previous minimum was 2012. It extends out quite a bit and it fluctuates quite a bit, but it's a similar pattern to compare that to 2016. And 2007 was also, you know, a lot of fluctuation, but extending out here. Um, if you go back, say 1990, there's fluctuation, right? But it's more about the mean here. There's, there, there's fluctuation, okay? Um, sea ice extent. Okay, let's have a look at some graphs. So this is 2016 now, September 7th. This is extent and this is the graph coming down here. So the only year lower is 2012, but satellite information, this is satellite data. They don't tell you everything about the ice. You know, you're looking down, you're trying to assess it. This is uh, thickness and volume. So this is the sea ice thickness. Um, so we've got you know, there's, there's some ice piled up here, but it's not enough to stop. The, all these channels are open, so the ice is going through. It's hosing out of the Arctic Ocean through those channels, which I said before was a new phenomena. Look at the ice volume, okay? So this is 2016. We're just doing this right now. We're, there is still a chance, you know, if the meteorology, it, the forecast is a week or two out, you know, more pressure lows, more storms, I'll show you that in a minute. So that could drive more ice out there, more ice out there, mix the water more, cause more melting. If this line continues down, boom, we're, we're at a record year. Un, you know, it's hard to say, unlikely, but possible. Okay, so we go to Nevin's blog. There's all kinds of stuff here. This is a PO, my, PO mass uh, volume coming down. And there's lots of decent, lots of good images of what's happening. So August 2nd to September 2nd comparisons, you know, what the ice was like a month ago to what it's like now, all kinds of neat stuff. You can just go here and look at these. This is called the, you know, you can see the variation here. This is over the Wrangell arm, 